Chris Arps substituting for Mark Cox today. Um, Governor Kasich, you accepted Obamacare and Medicaid money. And the president, Donald Trump, has said that he wants to repeal and replace. Uh, I'm not believing too much that uh, you believe that uh, Donald Trump is going to follow your ideas. And it looks like uh, the president is on television. Liz, can we uh, bring the Mr. Trump? I have, um, uh, along with... Uh, oh, that wasn't was... him. Sorry about that. Okay, I've t- I, I brought up that uh, health care clip from, from uh, Governor Kasich because our next guest is going to be Ethan... A- e- Ethan Thampy, I'm sorry, I'm losing all of my stuff here, and Representative Jim Neely. And what we're going to be talking about is House Bill uh, 437, which allows persons with certain serious medical conditions to use medical cannabis. And uh, I'd love to get the listeners' uh, views on this and, and, and let these two gentlemen take some, take some questions. Again, that's House Bill 437, allows persons with serious certain medical conditions to use medical cannabis. Epen Thampy, how are you, sir? Good. Very good, sir. Uh, do we have uh, Representative Neely also here? Uh, I don't. No, we don't. Okay, yeah. hopefully he gets on the line soon. Okay, let me read your bio a little bit. Uh, Epen is a product of St. Louis. He graduated from Parkway North and studied economics and mathematics at Mizzou. After starting a career in the wine business, he jumped over to cannabis drug policy, criminal justice reform advocacy, and now works as a lobbyist in the Capitol representing those interests. Welcome, sir. Glad to, glad to be here. Now, you are uh, an advocate of, of uh, medical cannabis uh, usage for people that have, uh, I assume, serious medical conditions. Um, I'm always curious to get your view on this before we jump in. A lot of people feel that medical cannabis uh, legalization is the back doorway to get recreational cannabis passed. Um, what's your views on that, sir? I think that's a bad excuse for not being compassionate and uh, letting people have the freedom to to choose uh, uh, their health here and and uh, and their medicine. Um, you know, we, we talk about rejecting Obamacare and the government's interference and, and how we are to obtain insurance and health care. I think this is essentially the same argument. Hmm. You know, and I know Senator Schmidt, I think, um, was embroiled in this debate a couple of years ago. Um, I think he has a special needs uh, child, and they were... Uh, I think medical cannabis oil was was uh, something that they were using that was getting them relief, and I think that kind of uh, put this kind of on the forefront of the issue for folks. Was was isn't that correct? Yeah, you know the special needs community is is definitely one of the communities that really is driving this issue. I mean, um, it's not just uh, childhood epilepsy; it's schizophrenia, it's autism. Um, you know, I, you know, I've been. I'm connected with the Autism Outreach Fellowship out in Jackson County. Um, you know, the sheriff there is a big supporter of theirs. Uh, you know, his mom runs the Autism Outreach Group. But, you know, their biggest issue right now is medical cannabis. You know, it is uh, demonstrated uh, in, to many members of their community that it has potential to significantly improve the quality of lives of uh, people with autism and autism spectrum issues. And, uh and, and and I think once you once people see uh, uh, and hear those stories, I think people really uh, ha- have a better sense of why this is an uh, important issue and a, a real a, really a freedom issue. Okay, and and as I said, if you if the callers want to talk uh, come, or call in and talk to uh, Epen, our numbers are three one four nine six nine ninety seven ninety seven or eight six six four five five ninety seven ninety seven. Epen, where is House Bill four thirty seven right now in the process? It's, uh, you know, uh, Representative Neely, he's uh, one of the two doctors in the House, and the uh, bill's uh, set for a hearing uh, this Wednesday in front of the Health Policy Committee, which is uh, headed by the other doctor in the House, Representative uh, Keith Frederick. Um, so, uh, you know, hopefully that goes well. 
How has this been? Is this the first time that this has been brought up? How many times has this been introduced uh, in the legislature? How far has it gotten in those past uh, instances? If it has been introduced, and what are the chances? Do you believe of it passing this session? You know, that's a good question. You know, uh, I, I remember I talked to Lieutenant Governor, former Lieutenant Governor Peter Kinder a while back, and he told me he'd voted for industrial hemp in 1992. And I know that, you know, hemp is always an issue that's come up before the legislature and, you know, the other half of it, which is the medical cannabis half, um, has, you know, there's always been proposals in front of the legislature. I don't think they've really had much traction until the last three or four years when you've really seen an emergence of patient focused advocacy. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, you've also seen, one of the other things you've seen in the last few years is the emergence of a substantial support from law enforcement, um, which I think is, as well as the veterans, as well as the veterans community, I think also deserves a lot of credit for highlighting their uh, issues on this front, right? That, um, oh, so sorry. I think, so I think, you know, although there's usually a proposal made every year, I think the proposals made in the last two or three years began to have uh, more traction. I think we're at the point where, you know, I'm not going to say we could pass something this year just yet, but I think if we had a couple things happen favorably for the issue, and uh, um, you know, we were able to showcase the right uh, aspects of it, I think that we're in good shape to. Get something done this session or next. Excellent. Now, also while I was doing my research uh, on this bill, I saw that this uh, this bill is very personal for uh, Dr. Neely. Um, his daughter um, in 2014 um, she succumbed to stage four colorectal cancer in 2015. It was an interview that she did, but she was quoted as saying that shouldn't be up to somebody that has no involvement in my care. It says, if a doctor thinks certain medication could help me in some way, then that's up to us. So I'm sure that is the the death of of the the doctor's daughter. Was that probably the main impetus for him to get involved with this? You know, Dr. Neely has always been a champion for uh, uh, compassionate, you know, medical care and an advocate for people, especially with uh, terminal illnesses. Um, and and the options that and the freedom that they need to have you know any any options that they can, um, so you know some yeah I mean of course you know this is this is you know he has personal issues with it and he's always championed uh, these issues I you know uh, the the situation with his uh, daughter led him to champion the what, what is known as the right to try law right which allows for uh, access to investigational drugs. Um, so, you know, if you have cancer and there is a uh, experimental drug in clinical trial and you can't, you don't qualify for the clinical trial, his, his law would allow you for to have access to that experimental drug. Um, you know, and, and actually it's important to note that this medical cannabis legislation is within that framework. You know, his, Neely's proposal creates a Schedule One. Um, exception uh, allowing medical cannabis into the right to try framework. So it has, it, it, you know, the the structure of it is, you know, within this clinical research oriented um, system where, um, you know, we were really not thinking about this as, as a cannabis issue so much as a we're we're expanding access to you know drugs. Uh, for experimental drugs for for people who who really need it. Got it. We got um, we got a question from Mike. Mike says there's too much silly choice at dispensaries for for marijuana. Mike, go ahead. Yeah, I was just curious. I mean, I'm all for using cannabis for medical reasons if it's proven to work, and I think there should be a lot more investigation and research into it. But I think a lot of legitimacy of its use is harmed by the fact that you go into the dispensaries and you've got, like, your choice between Starry Dog and Galaxy and Hips and whatever these crazy psychedelic names are for the different types of cannabis. I mean, it should, when I go in to get my blood pressure medicine, I don't get my choice between 20 different types. I get what the doctor prescribed. And I think they could help their cause a lot if the doctor prescribed it, they went, they got it, and was done. They are with it these stores like the old head shops of the 60s. Thanks, Mike. Ethan? Hello? Did I disconnect him? 
culture that oh, is yes. very much within that framework, you know, um, and, and really what's key to it is, you know, over time, the implementation and development of, yeah. of, of continuing med- medical education. Okay. You know, uh, we have clinical researchers here in Missouri who uh, are doing cutting-edge research on, on cannabis and how it can um, impact some of these conditions. If we were to pass Neely's bill, they would have more freedom to uh, set up and conduct clinical trials and do the science and have a better understanding of uh, of what genetics and what uh, you know constituent components of cannabis are important in and 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 do the research that really leads to the development of uh, pharmaceutical grade cannabis uh, products and um, you know I, I I agree you know especially if you go out west there's uh, um, there can be a sense of you know, we don't understand this so well yet, but, you know, here in Missouri, we really do have the resources, the scientific resources to to uh, understand this. I mean, you optimize corn, soybeans, and uh, cotton in this state. We could do the same for hemp and cannabis, I think, really uh, put this as a medical drug in a, in a place where, you know, you know, we're doing a lot of the, the, the research and a lot of the development here. Do you personally, or does your organization have a position on recreational marijuana uh, legalization? We do not. Okay. Appreciate it. Anything else you'd like to add? Is there a website or uh, or, or you know, somewhere where yeah, people can you know, reach I'm, you? I'm, uh, 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 you know, I, I represent uh, groups and interests, nonprofit and profit mm-hmm. interests in, on this issue. Um, so, you know, I'm just a uh, registered lobbyist with, uh, you know, my own firm. But if you want more information about this bill, I'd, I'd have you go to house.mo.gov and look up House Bill 437 and, you know, contact your representatives and express your opinion. And, you know, I think that one of the great things about this issue is that um, we really do have the chance here to um, bring a lot of people together and you know, through the democratic process in a, in a productive way that I think will ultimately result in Missouri being better off. Epen, I appreciate your time. I know we're Facebook friends, uh, but we really got a chance to get to know you a little bit this weekend. Um, you brought a lot of clarity to this issue, and uh, I wish you all the best in luck uh, to you and Representative Neely on uh, getting this important legislation passed. Well, very much appreciate it. Thank and, you for um, your t- I'm, I'm just glad we got Jim Neely out there working hard for uh, patients. Thank you for your time. Okay. And Todd, we'll be, uh, I'll get you, uh, get to your call when we come back from break. Please don't hang up and we will uh, talk about it. Thank you. The Mark Cox Show on FM News Talk 971, 987, AM 1490, and 971 talk.com. Hey guys, Glover here. Win tickets to watch the Blues take on the Anaheim Ducks at the Scott Trade Center on Friday, March 10th. Listen to the show for your chance to win or register online at 971talk.com. And don't forget to stop by the Blues team store to get special items for St. Patrick's Day. When it comes to real estate, experience matters, folks. There's, there's 